Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hello everyone I welcome you all in this live session um, in this course introduction to political theory and uh, um, I am Mithilis Kumar Jha your course, course instructor I um, um, invite you all to uh, ask your questions uh, queries comments or any dots um, in the comment section or in the chat section I will be very happy to address uh, those uh, to begin with uh, let me um, uh, address some of the uh, general um, uh, dots or questions that you may have so um, uh, first of all I would like to um, thank each one of you for uh, enrolling in this course and also participating um, every week and submitting your assignments and I um, appreciate uh, your participation and look forward to your weekly um, uh, feedbacks and suggestion on those assignments and uh, um, uh, uh, subject contents. Um, uh, the um, uh, structure of this course uh, in terms of evaluation is uh, that you have to do assignments every week that is it is a 12 week course and uh, you have to um, submit the assignments every week and um, in your for your certificate um, uh, you um, uh, you will be um, evaluated on the basis of 25% uh, marks from your assignment and 75 percent for uh, the final exam and uh, from the um, assignment segments uh, the 25 percent would be um, 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 assessed on the basis of your best eight assignments so out of 12 uh, your marks will be calculated on the basis of the eight base assignment that you have um, uh, you have submitted and 75 percent is for the uh, final exam. For passing this course you have to have uh, about um, uh, 10 marks out of um, 25 and 30 marks out of 75. So, in total you have to have about 40 percent to uh, pass uh, this course. Um, I also appreciate your participation on the discussion forum. And today um, I uh, once again encourage you to uh, write your questions and queries during this live session um, uh, uh, and I will be very happy to uh, address those. But uh, um, I would also like to address some of the questions which you have uh, put up on the discussion forum. So, um, one uh, such um, um, question uh, was about uh, this uh, concept what is political and this is at the core of this course introduction to political theory how to understand uh, uh, political and there cannot be a very um, easy um, um, all um, conclusive response to this uh, question what is political because of the very nature uh, of um, uh, political which if you recall our initial lectures in this course that it is a very dynamic uh, uh, subject where the subjects, the contents, the methods and the approach constantly uh, changes and there is a kind of elasticity to uh, this concept of political as well. So, for instance, uh, for understanding purpose, let us understand political in two sense one would be a kind of narrow um, um, limited sense of political that is any matters which concerns the common affairs of a uh, society or a country or a community 
um, that is related to say uh, state or laws or constitution or election or political parties. So, uh, political in this narrow limited sense with a small p would be uh, those areas of uh, discussions or those issues which related to the common life of a people or a community or a state which deals with the issues related to uh, state, polity, um, economy or uh, for instance um, uh, constitution, political parties, elections and so on. But then uh, over the um, uh, decades, uh, we have also seen how there have been new theorization about the political. So, for instance, um, uh, in this broader sense of political, you not only talk about state, political parties, elections that may remain a very important issue, but you also talk about those domains or areas of life which was not regarded earlier as part of political. So, for instance, the question of uh, in the feminist scholarship the personal is political. So, the matter that concerns the life in a family or uh, the personal intimate relationship between husband and wife can be equally regarded as the part of the political. The other example would be say environmental movements and environmental politics. So, the question of ecology, global warming or environment is equally uh, related to or included in the domain of uh, the political. So, um, um, uh, political in that sense has this both uh, broader uh, and also in a sense narrow and limited understanding. And by the very nature of this domain, there is many complexities, conflicts and layered uh, position in terms of uh, the issue that concerns uh, political. So, for instance, the various topics or concepts that we have covered um, includes um, uh, those, um, uh, those uh, uh, multiple interpretations or um, uh, opposite or at times conflicting um, um, understanding of uh, these concepts and uh, topics. So, political as a domain is driven by the ideological and the social position of the subject and therefore, they have uh, different opinions or interpretations on the same topic. For instance, law, state, uh, parties uh, and uh, so on. So, I hope uh, I have addressed this question of uh, political. It is remain a very complex multi-layered uh, um, um, uh, uh, domain of um, uh, inquiry or uh, discussion which has both the narrow and the broader outlook and it is constantly evolving and in that sense a dynamic, uh, uh, dynamic subject. Now, the other similar question uh, that uh, many of you have asked on uh, this um, um, uh, uh, discussion forum is the question of normative thinking. What is uh, normative political theory? And, um, if you recall again the first um, uh, few lectures where we have discussed uh, the nature and the characteristic of political theory, we have discussed that uh, how uh, political theory for a very long time has been in a uh, normative subject. And normative subject means uh, a subject which deals with the question of um, values, the question that should be um, uh, uh, about what ought to be rather than what is. So, in terms of addressing the actual practical issues and concerns for a very long time political theorists um, have been addressing the question of what ought to be or what should be. So, the response in political theory about say what is ideal state. So, rather than what is the status of existing state or the economy or the polity they were more concerned about what should be the nature of ideal state, ideal polity, uh, the civic uh, uh, virtue and so on. So, the normative questions or normative thinking is a very dominating, um, uh, have been very uh, dominating tradition where uh, the um, 
try to address uh, these normative uh, questions uh, um, um, where the uh, actual or the practical uh, uh, questions are by and large uh, undermined or uh, unexplored by focusing more on the um, uh, 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 normative questions and all. So, in political theory the approach is um, uh, uh, divided into uh, three uh, major uh, characteristic or uh, 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 approaches. Uh, one is uh, normative tradition, then there is exploratory nature and then the contemplative nature. So, normative political theory, so most of the um, concepts that we have discussed in this course is normative uh, in nature and being normative which is value driven which deals with the question of what ought to be resulted in this uh, uh, multiple or different interpretation of the same concept. So, if you remember uh, one of the uh, features of the concepts that we have discussed in this course is that these concepts are essentially contested concepts. What does it mean by uh, essentially contested concepts? And uh, there we have seen that because of the uh, social position and also the ideological position of the subjects and the scholars, they differ in their conceptualization, in their understanding of these uh, <coughs> concepts. So, um, uh, normative political theory in that sense is um, uh, a uh, 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 approach where they address the question of what ought to be or what is normative rather than what is and uh, what is the actual uh, situation. So, this is about um, this question of um, uh, normative political theory and I hope uh, I address you. Once again those of you who are joining now, I will encourage you to uh, write your question in the comment, back, uh, comment, uh, comment uh, box or chat box and I will be uh, happy to address those. There was one um, um, a spreadsheet uh, uh, in the Google form when the uh, uh, course tees made this announcement about the live session and some of you have raised uh, some questions uh, there and I would like to um, address those questions as well. So, Raja Soni asked about uh, political theory in Africa. And uh, this question I believe is too broad and uh, uh, I could not um, uh, understand what um, uh, uh, Raja Soni wanted to ask specifically about uh, this question, but uh, my uh, response would be that um, in contemporary political theorization. And there is a move towards uh, developing uh, theory and thought in non-European tradition as well. And uh, uh, political thought and political thinking for a very long time have been dominated by European political traditions and Euro European political thought. So, in that context there is now in contemporary uh, um, uh, times increasing assertion of political theorization. Uh, political uh, uh, thought and philosophy in non-European tradition and therefore, we also talk about say Indian tradition of political thought or Indian political theory. Similarly, there is now uh, increasing interest in understanding uh, the political theory in Africa and when we engage with the political theory in Africa which will make the uh, uh, tradition of political theory globally more enriching precisely because the issues and the agendas that uh, um, is there in uh, African tradition of political thought and political theory would enrich the concepts, uh, the language and the approaches of uh, political theory that we have now. So, that is uh, my response to um, Raja Soni. Uh, Karthik uh, Khatana asked about um, what types of question can we accept in our final assessment, will it be MCQ or long answer type question. So, answer to this is that um, 
in the end um, um, uh, exam um, uh, or the final exam, the nature of question would be uh, MCQ multiple choice question where uh, some questions would be from the assignments, some would be on the basis of your recall when you uh, listen to different lectures. Uh, your understanding of those and then the finally about 25 and so there would be a question which would be analytical in nature. So, you um, are supposed to answer those and the nature of all these questions would be MCQ uh, type question and not long answer type question. Uh, in this live session uh, my purpose is not to um, uh, discuss any topic with you but to address or respond to some of the questions and the queries um, uh, that you may have and I once again encourage you to type your question in the comment box and the chat box. Now, uh, some of the uh, uh, topics which I have covered in this course, um, I hope um, uh, it is um, beneficial for you and it helps you to understand uh, not just the nature of political theory and the challenges of uh, contemporary political theory and the direction uh, of contemporary political theory, but some of these concepts are necessary to understand the politics in any society. So, I hope these concepts like liberty, equality, rights, justice, power and also state and sovereignty enables you to have your own understanding or uh, uh, opinion about many of the issues that concerns a polity and that is part of the political as I have uh, discussed few minutes ago. So, uh, these topics um, are uh, very crucial to understand uh, the politics in any society, uh, the role of a state, uh, the interaction of a state with the citizen, the rights of citizen, the uh, liberty or the kind of equality that is prevailing in any society that you can uh, develop and how to uh, hold the state and how a state govern, how it acquires legitimacy. Some of these questions we have discussed. One of uh, such question was the nature of uh, power, authority and legitimacy and how these are interlinked. So, these um, uh, topics and themes I hope uh, you have um, learned from these lectures and um, if you have any question and dots on those, I will encourage you to, um, to write it on the discussion forum during this live session and also uh, when there is announcement about uh, the live session through the Google spreadsheet. So, uh, um, I will encourage uh, you to uh, actively participate on the discussion forum and also during this live chat. So, I welcome once again for uh, using the discussion forum and also um, the Google spreadsheet. Uh, I request you to make your question uh, more specific. And um, um, then um, the interaction or the risk to respond about it. So, uh, one of um, the um, uh, themes that is uh, very crucial for understanding political theory is the uh, question of uh, liberty. And I would like to um, address uh, uh, this, and which I hope many of you have um, uh, also um, uh, find it a very uh, central theme, but there are very different opinion about um, this concept. For instance, what is the difference between negative and positive liberty or how uh, freedom is connected to the question of morality and autonomy as in uh, uh, Kant, what is free speech and what is hate speech and what is John Stuart Mill's conception of um, um, uh, uh, freedom and wh uh, what is his argument for uh, liberty. So, um, the um, 
Um, argument about uh, negative and positive liberty comes from um, uh, Isaiah Berlin and about liberty if you uh, recall our uh, lectures and uh, there is this um, uh, common assumptions or understanding about using liberty and freedom interchangeably, but it is not so analytically. Uh, theoretically, as we have seen how Hannah Arendt and many others have argued about that uh, uh, liberty is something which you experience when you participate in the common affairs of the, uh, uh, of the um, 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 uh, community. So, um, Isaiah Berlin talks about this negative and positive um, uh, liberty and um, his argument was uh, that uh, the only liberty that an individual enjoy which is very crucial for his growth for his uh, development as a uh, human being uh, or full development as a human being is through the liberty and only that liberty counts which is restriction or absence of any uh, restriction from the outside. So, um, uh, liberty in this negative sense is understood as absence of constraint or absence of restrictions and impediments or interference from the uh, external forces. So, my liberty is only those areas of life or those sphere of life where I am completely free and there is absence of any restrictions. So, that is the definition of uh, liberty and that is what uh, he calls the negative liberty uh, and positive liberty is about um, uh, a kind of condition which enables the individual to do something. So, it is uh, uh, in that sense freedom to do something or liberty to do something. In um, a negative sense it is um, uh, freedom from external impediments. So, positive freedom according to um, S. I. Berlin is um, uh, not desirable precisely because the authorities or state or the external uh, authority may use this um, uh, notion of uh, positive freedom to curtail my freedom, to restrict my movement which is not desirable for the individual growth. The second question was about the freedom of um, um, uh, freedom as an autonomy or the question of morality and Immanuel Kant talked about uh, how individual can exercise freedom by being autonomous from any kind of external uh, controls or regulation. So, um, one of the uh, central concept in understanding Kantian uh, um, notion of freedom is the categorical imperative that is you um, uh, develop the laws which governs your uh, conduct or your actions. While uh, devising that law, individual himself legislate that law and while legislating that law, he should be governed by this categorical imperative which he called that you agree to govern your life on the same principle you want others to follow in the given context universally and unconditionally. So, that um, maxim which he calls a priori maxim is the only guiding principle to devise the law which will regulate your life and therefore, the individual taking this ethical moral uh, position through categorical imperative which he or she wants others to follow universally and un unconditionally in his or her own condition, then that could be the um, um, source of uh, freedom or autonomy and this question of freedom and autonomy therefore, in uh, Kantian uh, philosophy is connected to the idea of um, um, uh, uh, morality. Uh, similarly, John Stuart Mill which is the most um, uh, um, powerful argument in support of um, uh, freedom or liberty is um, uh, the idea that human uh, um, uh, society as a whole may uh, benefit 
from uh, giving maximum freedom to every individual uh, the um, uh, right to freely uh, speak and express one's thought and uh, the society or the community which provide this maximum freedom to individual that is freedom to express freedom to think freedom to speak so this freedom of a speech and expression in the long term is beneficial for the society as a whole or for humanity as a whole and in support of this freedom of a speech and expression he uh, 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 went on to even um, argue that um, uh, if the individual has the power he is more uh, correct and justified in silencing the hum whole humanity rather than whole humanity silencing the voice of one individual. Now, the uh, reason for this kind of argument is that suppose if an individual is making false claim or giving one's um, um, irresponsible or irrational argumentation, when that argumentation is allowed to be expressed in the public and the public if they are having the correct and more rational or convincing argument can silence or can convince that person to correct his or her position. But suppose if a society as a whole holding some incorrect or irrational uh, position on certain issue, then that one person can correct the whole uh, society and society as a whole will be beneficial and it will not be uh, detrimental to, to uh, anyone. So, therefore, um, uh, uh, John Stuart Mill's argument for the uh, uh, freedom of speech and expression uh, comes from his uh, uh, argument that in the long term such uh, freedom of speech and expression would be beneficial for the uh, society as a whole. Only condition which, uh, which on which one can restrict the freedom of a speech and expression when such expression is harmful for the other, uh, harmful for others. So, the state or any external authority is justified in curtailing the freedom of individual only on the condition when some act of that individual is harmful for the others. Otherwise, uh, he argues that individuals should be given maximum freedom to um, express himself or herself. Now, that leads to the question of um, um, uh, hate speech and uh, free speech which uh, we have discussed. And if you have any uh, question on uh, this, so uh, in contemporary discourse you may come across many arguments which is uh, regarded uh, by the authority and many other uh, groups in the society also as hate speech. And uh, um, there are uh, different uh, uh, positions on what constitute free speech and what is hate speech and sometimes the classification between hate and free speech is not that clear. So, uh, when um, um, uh, theoretically arguing in support of freedom of speech and expression, how one could also uh, justify some uh, restriction on the speech and expression which can be uh, regarded as the hate speech. And we have discussed it in this lecture. So, only those speech which incites violence or which is offending to some community, only that speech could be regarded as the hate speech. So, uh, in this concept of freedom, uh, that is the example which um, uh, I have been discussing to you for a few minutes. It shows that how freedom and liberty which is essential for the growth of individual or the creativity of the individual and the prosperity of the society. So, many scholars have argued that a society is more prosperous which it which allows more freedom of speech and expression or to take decision which is um, uh, uh, concerning one's own material uh, life 
the overall result would be a more prosperous and free society which is good for democracy which is good for rule of law and which uh, develops the republican uh, republican values amongst uh, the citizens so um, uh, nonetheless this uh, concept of freedom one can also find there are different um, um, understandings or interpretation of uh, these terms and it is connected to many other concepts such as equality justice that we have discussed so um, let me once again um, um, uh, thank you for uh, participating on the discussion forum or making your uh, questions through um, google sheet um, i am also hoping to have one more live session in the next month and for that i'll uh, encourage you to um, write your questions comments on the discussion forum as well as the google spreadsheet uh, spreadsheet when um, uh, uh, such announcement is made some of you in the google spreadsheet has mentioned about uh, the need for um, a separate or um, uh, separate or uh, um, uh, distinct live uh, session so those of you who are interested in those uh, separate live session i'll uh, request you to uh, to uh, uh, send your justification by writing to me or on the discussion forum and i uh, will see the feasibility of having one separate um, live session for those who are from industry or academia to discuss your um, uh, proposals or any other issue that you wish to uh, discuss so um, i thank you once again for uh, joining me during this live session and i look forward to uh, your participation on the discussion forum and i'll be very happy to respond to your queries and comments and also increase you to take more uh, uh, proactive participation on the discussion forum so thank you all and thanks for listening